Jim Richards, I want to wish you a happy new year. Can you believe it's 2020? I'm telling you what, I can remember as a new believer uh, being told, you know, uh, the world would, would end by 2000. Well, you know something, the world hadn't ended, but I'm kind of wishing it would. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for Jesus to come back and reign in righteousness and, and, and show us how great life can be here on planet Earth before we, before we go to heaven. Mm. Man, but anyhow, you know, this is time of year when everybody's making resolutions. Everybody's, and you know what? Rightly so. Uh, it's, it's natural that, that there be certain uh, uh, time demarcations that you say, okay, you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a different year this year, or maybe at a birthday. It's like, you know what? Uh, this age I, I is not going to be like what it's been last year or what it's been in time before. But, but there's, actually all kinds of positive reasons for times like the new year to be times of making decisions uh, about changing our life. As a matter of fact, one of the most interesting things about that is one of the things that, that distinguishes us from all other creatures is the fact that we can change the quality of our life simply by making decisions. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, God created us in his likeness and image, and he is sovereign. And a sovereign doesn't mean he can do anything he wants to. Sovereign means no, no one outside of him makes him do anything. And so when he created the world and created us, you know, he created the world a specific way, and he'll never make a decision that violates that. But because we were created in God's likeness and image, we too are sovereign. And we're sovereign in that sense that we make our own choices. Our life becomes uh, what it becomes based on the beliefs and the choices that we make from those beliefs. Now, you may, you may struggle with that because religion has told you just the opposite of, of that your entire life. Religion has made you think that, that God is mysteriously working behind the scene and he's going to force you into his will whether you want it or not, whether you like it or not, whether it's painful, whether it's pleasing, you know, that, that God's going to force something on you. Well, he can't do that if his word is true, because his word says we were created in his likeness and in his image. We are sovereign. So we can choose to follow the will of God. We can choose to go where God is leading, but God can't and God will not force us to follow him anywhere. So we make choices and like God, those choices really are a part of our ability to operate or exercise authority. You know, uh, that's another thing uh, that you want to realize going into this year. If you're ready to make some resolutions, if you're ready to make some decisions that are going to change your world and, and really be able to follow through them, really be able to see them happen the way that uh, that you hope for the outcome to be, then I want to teach you how to do that because you can't. Now, you, you know that most of the decisions you have made in the past that you might call resolutions, uh, you didn't stick with them very long. Uh, you didn't, maybe didn't follow through on them. And, you know, studies talk about, I don't even remember now, I used to introduce these stats every year in New Year's just to, to show people the importance of learning how to use God's processes for making decisions, how to, how to cooperate with how we were created in the likeness and the image of God and how we can do that and totally and completely change uh, how the process is, is going to go for us. Uh, sadly, people who want to make their life better do some things that are probably good things or probably helpful things, probably beneficial to some, to, in some ways, but if they don't follow the way God created us, the way God designed us to be able to govern our own lives, if it doesn't follow that process, in the end, we will fail. And uh, the majority of, um, of New Year's resolutions are broken before the end of January, uh, which I, I find to be amazing. Now, what happens 
when you make a resolution and you end up failing. And this is what we're talking about this month. We're, we're talking about resolutions that lead to destruction because really all month long, I'm going to be talking about success without self-destruction. And this, this, this is really key. So many of the times that we want to improve the quality of our lives, so many of the times that we want to, uh, to, to make these important choices about where our life is going to go, the process that we use in making these choices and trying to follow them through actually lead to different levels and different types of self-destruction. Now, when you make a decision that you don't follow through on, one of the key things that happens is you lose self-confidence. Now, one of the most powerful uh, series that I have taught in all of my history of ministry is a series called Identity, Self-Image, and Self-Worth. Now, in this, in this continuum from identity to self-worth, there is a factor that I don't put into that title because that factor uh, plays in in, in in various different ways in self-confidence. See, identity, self-image, and self-worth, this all evolves from our, how we connect to God, what we believe about God, what we believe about ourselves. You know, if we're connecting to God as Father, and that's why when Jesus taught about prayer, that's why he, he taught us to start our prayer out with our Father with the heart in heaven. And he's not saying that we say those words. That's not the point. He is saying we need to first and foremost connect to God as our Father. It's connecting to God as our Father that establishes our sense of identity. And once our, our sense of identity is established, then we look to that person from whom we derive identity, whether it's our parents, whether it's a, you know, a teacher, whether it's a boss, whether it's a politician, it doesn't matter. Wherever we're looking to derive our identity, we actually begin to take on the image of that individual, of that person. So becoming godly, uh, uh, going through what the Bible calls transformation. Transformation now, th these words are wrong. I'm going to use them. Transformation is, is, is what some people, what I would call effortless change. Now, change, it, it, change is not the right word because change is becoming something you're not. Transformation is becoming who you really are. It's, it, it's, it's stepping into this identity, this true identity. So when we, get our, when we look to God for our identity, then transformation happens when we're looking to him, experiencing his love and experiencing his acceptance and experiencing all of these positive things and seeing him as he is, then we start to take on that image. We take on the image of the being or the person that we behold, that we're looking to, to give us our sense of identity. And then self-worth, see, the the word love, the Greek word for love, more than anything else, means to value something. And so, so when we're looking to someone for identity and when we're, when we're transforming, we're always trying to pay attention to see if they value us. And what God is all about value. God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us, that to pay an incredible price for us so that we could live and so we would not have to suffer um, from, from our life of sin. So, so all of the factors of identity, self-image, and self-worth are based on connecting with God, seeing God as He is, believing He is who He says He is, believing that we are who He says we are, and then accepting the value, i.e. love, that He expressed for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But you see, self-confidence is not in that realm of just looking to God and going through that continuum of identity, self-image, and self-worth. Self-confidence comes from basically your track record, from your behavior. Now, people who start and quit things, they lose confidence and, you know, that, in religious talk, they may be saying, well, God let me down. God didn't help me. God didn't get me through this situation. But really in their heart, 
they know in fact that they quit, that they let themselves down. And it's not confidence in God that they really lose, it's confidence in themselves, confidence in their willingness to follow God, confidence in their willingness to trust God, confidence in their, in, in their, in their willingness to follow God as He leads them into success. And so, you know, one, one of the things that is so important in life is that every time we make a decision, unless we discover it conflicts with a biblical moral value or ethic, uh, or, you know, we just, which would mean hurting other people, hurting ourselves or whatever. When we make a decision to do something, we need to follow it through. You know, the Bible says, blessed is the man who swears to his own hurt and changes not. Now, if you're a legalist, you read that and you say, oh man, that's legalism. You know, you, you know, we don't have to follow through on everything. You know, it doesn't matter if I follow through. God loves me. So if I don't follow through, if I don't stick to something, if I don't do what I said I was going to do, it really doesn't matter because God loves me. Well, it might not matter to God. It might not change his love for you, but I'll tell you what it does. It changes your trust for you, your, your confidence in you. And so every time you make a decision that you do not follow through on, regardless of the reason, even if you've got a good excuse, it really doesn't matter. Uh, every time you make a decision you do not follow through on, then you decrease your sense of confidence. You decrease uh, uh, the belief in yourself as uh, and however you want to put that, you know, uh, some people can try to get real spiritual. Well, it's not belief in myself, it's belief about God. Well, belief in yourself in Christ, what, whatever you want to call it, you lose the confidence. And once you begin losing confidence, several things happen. Number one, you lose your courage. When there's no confidence, there's no courage. When there's no courage, you are even afraid to make the decisions that you want to make because you're, you don't want to face the failures again. You don't, you don't want to face how hard it's going to be if you make a mess out of your life again or if you fail again. Again. Man, it's going to hurt your ego. It's going to hurt your self your your sense of self worth that you're deriving from this. But ultimately, it's going to hurt your confidence. When you hurt your confidence, it can do one of two things. It can either number one, it can either keep you from even making the choices that you would like to make. But number two, it will make you look for justifiable reasons to give up and to quit every time you face hardship. Because you know. If, if we feel like quitting, as long as we've got a good enough excuse for quitting, we kind of believe that we can make ourselves feel good about it. Well, you know what? That's really not true. Uh, on some level, you can convince yourself that. But I'm telling you, uh, uh, when you get your courage up and you start again, if you don't have confidence, the first hardship you run into, you will find an excuse to quit. Now. This doesn't seem all that positive so far, but we've got to, you got to understand this, that if you keep making resolutions or making decisions the way you have made decisions in the past, then you're going to keep up this pattern and ultimately you're going to reach a place where you have no hope. You have, you have no expectation of your life getting better. You have no confidence in, in God being able to do anything in your life. And so basically you will just melt down to a state of unhappy existence, waiting to die to go to heaven. And thank God, at least you got heaven, you know, to look forward to. But the sad thing is when most people reach that state of disillusionment, when most people reach that state of, of unhappiness, the sad thing is then they start anesthetizing themselves with, with drugs, booze, sex, or pornography, or some other kind of sin. And then you end up shipwrecking your spiritual life. Well, you know something, it just absolutely does not have to be that way. Now, I wanna take you on a journey this month that is going to show you how to go through the transformation internally that will empower you externally, that will empower your behavior so that when you make your decision, whatever your resolution is gonna be, you will make that resolution and you will be the person 
that can actually live that dream. You can, you'll be the person that can actually enjoy that success. So I want you to consider something. You, you may have already made a New Year's resolution, but here's what I want you to do. You know, you can hold that resolution in your heart. That's fine. But right now, don't put your emphasis on making that resolution happen. And don't even worry too much about, uh, about how consistent you are in it. Because what I, what I want to help you do is become that person. You know, become that person that can live that quality of life by allowing yourself to go through the biblical transformation process. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says to guard your heart with all vigilance. One translation says diligence. One translation says guard your heart above all that you keep, all that you guard, guard your heart. Now, your heart, as I've said so many times, is where your sense of self is is stored. In other words, your idea of who you are is stored in your heart. You say, you're talking about my physical heart, my spiritual heart. You know what? Don't even try to figure all that out. That, that really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, there's an overlap between the two, but the heart is the core of your beliefs. It's the core of, of everything that, that, you, that you are spiritually. It's a, and it's a combination of that and everything that you are emotionally. And, and it all comes together to establish a unique sense of self that's different from anybody else in the world. So the Bible tells you that it's absolutely essential that you guard your heart because out of your heart, it says, flow all of the issues of life. Now, if you've heard me speak many times, you've probably heard me use a reference to this verse and talk about the word issues because the word issues is could have been and maybe would have been a better translation from the Hebrew if, if instead of issues, it would have been boundaries. Now, probably in the, in the old English, the word issues made sense. But I want you to think about this. The beliefs of your heart establish a set of boundaries. And a set of boundaries, uh, there's, there's positive and negative factors about boundaries. Boundaries protect what can come in. And so in your heart and your sense of who you are and how you experience life, how you see life, how you think about yourself, how you feel about your success, how you feel about living your dreams, how you feel about, about anything about you uh, is protected. No one outside of you can actually influence your heart. By the way, if you're a leader, you know, I have a book called Leadership That Builds People, and I got a volume one and a volume two. Volume one is about establishing your, your heart as a leader, and uh, volume two is about developing leaders around you, and I'm, this year, in 2020, I'm going to be publishing the third part of this, and this is how to minister to people in a way to influence their heart, because, you know, the real truth is we cannot influence people's heart. Uh, they can influence their heart, and them influencing their heart is greatly contingent upon how we minister to them. Because you see, Jesus taught us that the way our heart is influenced is when anything that we hear, good or bad, doesn't matter. He taught this in Matthew 13, and, 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 uh, uh, and he taught this in, in Mark 4, in the parable of the sower. He says, he says, Whatever word you hear, and here he's talking about the word of the kingdom. Now, let me just say, when the Bible talks about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, it's talking about a realm that you enter into through your heart. And in that realm, you have the capacity, the opportunity, the potential to have heaven on earth. And I don't know about you, but I'm all about some heaven on earth. I am all about, you know, Jesus said this could be easy and light. I'm all about this being easy and light. And so he says that, that uh, the, with the measure you meet, when talking about the heart, the measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And he's talking about the measure you meet in response to that which you hear. Now, that whole, the, the measure that you meet would include the amount of thought that you give to what you hear, 
the amount of study that you give to what you hear, the amount of consideration you give to what you hear, the amount of pondering you give to what you hear, basically the amount of meditation, the way you think about and internally experience what you hear, where there's the truth, where there's the lie, whether it's about the kingdom of God or whether it's about the kingdom of this world, whether it's a word from God or a word from the devil, it really doesn't matter. It's whether or not that affects you is going to be determined by what you internally do with it. In other words, these boundaries are established by your heart. Nobody can force their way into these boundaries, not even God himself. He created you to be sovereign, make your own decisions, have your own boundaries. God can impress you. God can lead you. You can read God's Word. You can do all kinds of things, but God Himself cannot affect you beyond what happens in your heart. Now, the great thing about that is, you know, nobody else can, make, can destroy my faith. Nobody else can destroy my, destroy my confidence in God. Nobody else can destroy my identity, self-image, or self-worth. Nobody else can, can uh, uh, set me on a course that keeps me from becoming who I want to be in Jesus or keeps me from living my dreams. Only me and me alone. I am the only one who can keep the promises of God from happening in my life or make sure the promises of God do happen in my life. So these boundaries of the heart that the book of Proverbs tells us about, these boundaries of the heart protect us. And, and man, I'm telling you what, if you're around negative people, uh, if you're around people who put you down, number one, you don't need to stay around them. You say, well, what's their family? You know what? The Bible says a, a neighbor close by that can help you out is better than a family far away. And uh, so you know what? If your family doesn't encourage you, if your family doesn't strengthen you, I'm not saying reject them or be mean to them. I'm saying don't hang out with them. Don't go, don't listen to anybody that's going to be putting you down. And, and, and particularly if they have the influence in your life that when you walk away, you start thinking about those things. You start considering them. Is that really true? Am I really a bad person? Am I really stupid? Am I really never going to amount to anything? It is what we do with what we hear that determines if it gets on our heart. Once it becomes a belief of the heart, we will go on an automatic pilot and we will fulfill it whether we want it or not, whether we like it or not, does not matter. We will become what we believe, period, amen, the end. So praise God, we can protect ourselves from negativity and, and, and the lies, and all the stuff that's in the world. But the other side of that is, what about the people that are trying to encourage us? What about the people that are sharing a good word with us? What about the people that are sharing the promises of God with us? Well, you see, they can't get in and influence our heart either unless we take what we hear from them or what we read in the Bible. If we take those things and start considering those as being true, if we start considering that, well, I am created the likeness and image of God. I am a child of God. All the promises of God are mine. Then, then you know what? Then inwardly, I, I start going into transformation. I start, I start transforming effortlessly into these things. I go into automatic pilot to, be, to become my beliefs, to express my beliefs in the world. But there is a third factor in here about boundaries, and that is because boundaries decide who you are, you will not let yourself have success, happiness, uh, even pain. You won't let yourself have anything that is greater than the boundaries of your, of your beliefs about yourself. No, no, let me say this. I'm going to give you some tools, and I almost hate to mention these tools now because I don't even, I don't even, well, you can start, there's one of them that you can start using right away, but I got a package that I'm going to be offering. It's going to be two of the greatest tools you'll ever use, actually three of the greatest tools that you'll ever use if you want to make some resolutions this year that don't end up leading you to loss of self-confidence and they don't end up leading you to self-destruction. I have a package offer for you. It's Wired for Success, the book, Moving Your Invisible Boundaries, the book, and the heart physics 
I exercise on limitless living. I am packaging those three things. You say, why are you putting three things there? Because I'll tell you what, you got to have all three if you're going to make this journey. And if you want to get to where you can make resolutions and see them through, you got to know how to do it. You got to have the tools to do it. And these are the tools to do it. And uh, uh, you're not going to find anything that's going to influence your life more than these. Why? Because it's going to teach you how to take this information and you bring it into your heart and you develop it. Now, here's what this week's message is all about. If you make a resolution and you start pursuing something that is better than you think you deserve, if you start pursuing a success of any kind, marriage, relationships, job, finances, ministry, if you start pursuing a success of any kind that stretches you beyond the boundaries of what you believe about yourself, and you do that without changing the beliefs of your heart, it will end in some form of self-destruction because your heart is trying to protect you. And within these boundaries, if I believe that I'm godly and I sink below being a godly person, if, you know, if, if my morals and my ethics know, you know, and accept that telling the truth is the person that I am, that I want to be. So if I, if I, if I lie, in other words, it's like my heart's a thermostat that if I sink below the character, ethics, morality of my heart, my heart's always going to try to pull me back. Why? Because that's how I get rescued. It, 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 so it's not going to let me stay there very long. Now, if I stay there long enough to alter the beliefs of my heart, then, I, I, then there's no recovery. But it also works that way in that if, you're, if the temperature rises and, and your life starts getting better than you d think you deserve, it's going to pull it back in. And when it starts to pull it back in, this is where people experience a self-destruction because their heart said, no, this is not who you are. You, we have to stay within these bounds. So listen, this is going to be a great month. I'm going to give you some great tools. And by the end of this month, you're going to be able to make uh, resolutions, make decisions that you can see all the way through. The end. Listen, help me reach a lot of people. And all you got to do to help me reach people, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and, and like this. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you will subscribe to this on YouTube, uh, leave comments. Where the, Wherever you're watching this or listening to this, leave comments about how this is helping you, how this is benefiting you. And uh, also, if you know people this will benefit, be sure and share this with them because I'm telling you what, it helps people to get these messages and they can be among the millions of the people around the world who are having their lives transformed from learning how to work in cooperation with how God created us to live our dreams. And you know what? That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to live life to the best possible quality you can have. I'll talk to you next week. Be sure and be here.